Now, uh, my, my passion for math generation really originates from my dad, who actually is in the room. I, wanna, I, I just want to point him out. He's right over there. Actually, uh, uh, the long history of it is that the field of retina was founded in Boston. Okay, I, I'll, 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 <laughs> that's, 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 I, that's a statement that if, if I had some uh, Duke University people or, or Johns Hopkins people would, say, would, would really would make them cringe. But um, uh, their group uh, in Boston, uh, uh, it's, we call it the Skeptics Group, uh, actually uh, first developed some of the first treatments for things like retinal detachments and uh, previously blinding conditions. Uh, uh, there's actually, at Harvard, uh, there is a, uh, a Skeppens Eye Research Institute, and uh, Charles Skeppens, who's passed away, uh, was my dad's uh, partner uh, up in Harvard. Um, so that's my introduction. I, my introduction was actually uh, uh, on Sunday mornings. Uh, he would uh, come to me because that's the only time I would see him because he was always in the operating room. And he would say, Mike, when you grow up, you'll be a great man, and you're going to discover a cure for blindness and cancer. Okay, I was like five years old. <laughs> so you know, there, there was a lot of there a lot of uh, how do you put it? Uh, a, a lot of pressure uh, for me to go about and do that. And and so uh, you know, through the years, I I, I actually was doing research on eyes. Uh, I helped uh, in in the laboratory with my my father when I was in high school. And uh, there is a, a substance that we put inside the eye called silicone oil. So if you had a retinal detachment, uh, I remember uh, he would develop it, and I would be I would be the hands because putting oil into an eye, well, uh, you'd ha you'd have to have manual force. So I remember that when in high school I was like pushing pushing this, you know, for 30 minutes putting it into to, to an eye to for experiment, and I said. Geez, uh, this isn't that much fun. <laughs> but when I when I when I got when I got uh, older and I, I went, got to medical school, etc., I started realizing how important it was uh, to uh, to save vision. Um, you know, vision is uh, one of our most important senses, and uh, it's 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 also also the most important sense as we get older. And uh, through, through my dad, I met a lot of his uh, former patients. Some of them are, are here in this room, <laughs> okay? Uh, and and uh, I realized uh, from them, they became family friends, very close family friends. And uh, I had, well, there was, there was one, one of our family friends who was a Supreme Court Justice, at, in the, uh, uh, well, he, she was a, a judge in the Philippines. And she had this severe disease. And I, I watched her at, at, when I was in, in high school going, my God, you know, uh, she, she really was a very smart woman, you could tell that, but she couldn't see. And, and, and being a lawyer and being a judge, uh, she had to actually, uh, to read anything, she had to like be like this. And I, I remember telling my dad, you know, what, what's wrong with her, right? And she says, well, it's macular degeneration. <laughs> and, 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 and I said, well, dad, can't you fix that? I mean, you fix a lot of other things, didn't you? And, uh, and, 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 and he said to me, no, uh, so <laughs> it's up to you. And that sort of was the impetus for uh, me getting involved in, in eyes and math regeneration. Uh, and uh, so uh, when, when I was coming out of uh, medical school, um, uh, my dad hooked me up with uh, several of the leaders in, uh, at Harvard for trying to understand the disease. Uh, I, I worked with uh, a, a, a very a good friend of mine, uh, Elliot Burson, who um, is, uh, is working on was working on retinal degenerations that included retinitis pigmentosa and macular degeneration. And from there, I got to uh, uh, find out the work of a, a gentleman named Dr. Judah Folkman, who was actually a professor at uh, the Children's Hospital. So he's a pediatric surgeon. Why the heck would a, somebody involved in ophthalmology want to work with somebody in, in a pediatric surgical ward, right? And uh, from there, in that lab, uh, that's where we helped develop all these treatments that we are now uh, using in wet macular degeneration. So uh, that's where my passion came. But the other thing, other passion I had was taking care of patients. Um, I I'll tell you, uh, that's why I still see patients. And um, uh, the people who were involved in developing uh, these drugs, uh, so uh, one now is the chairman of Harvard Ophthalmology. She's the first woman chair. Her name is Joan Miller. Uh, the other one, uh, the other person I worked for was Tony Namus. He's now the, uh, the the vice president of all ophthalmology for the company that makes the drugs. Okay, um, he also was the founder of the company before. And then the other other person uh, is a professor at tumor biology in the University of London. So none of them are seeing patients, uh, and, and except for me. 
Uh, and people always ask, well, what the heck are you doing here? <laughs> but it's the passion that I have for educating and talking to patients. And that's why I, I, I hooked up with Larry, because uh, what I found is, is that as, as we see patients inside the clinic, we don't have time to talk to you, to explain to you what you have. <laughs> It, it, it was really a, an eye-opening experience where I, I was talking to a patient once um, uh, who uh, was seen, seen for, for 10 years, right, and was told that they had macular degeneration. Um, and it was probably the first time I saw the patient. And, and I asked her, so do you know what you have? And she goes, I have macular degeneration. And I asked her, well, do you know what that is? And she goes, no, I just know it's bad. <laughs> and I'm going, hello, I mean, uh, you should know what you have. You should know what it, what it means. Well, you know, and, and, and just because you have a diagnosis of macular degeneration doesn't mean you don't have hope and you don't have a promise to keep your vision for the rest of your life. That's what all our researchers have been trying to do, is develop things so that they, we, we can alleviate this burden of blindness in, uh, in our uh, elder, elder population. So this is the purpose of me being here, you know? I'm used to speaking more to doctors uh, uh, and, 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 and uh, you know, healthcare professionals than I am with patients, but then I speak to patients uh, on a one-to-one -one basis in my clinic, okay? And I'm never gonna lose that. And, and I've, I've decided, I, I know that, that I'm not gonna uh, go to uh, big industry or, or become a, uh, you know, something like what my, what my other uh, colleagues did. I'm gonna stay here taking care of patients and educating them because that's what's my passion. That's what I enjoy. And this is what this whole program is about. You can see it's a very long program. Why? Because you know, the information is coming at, at, at you so fast that uh, I, I'll tell you, uh, in six months, if we do one of these things again, a lot of the stuff will have changed. Okay, because research is happening at that pace. It's accelerated. And you know what? The research accelerating at that pace is good for all of you. Because I think most of you in this room have macular degeneration. And we will give you hope. Really, hope is what we want. Hope is, hope is, is what, what drives us. And uh, the hope of keeping your vision for the rest of your life is a phenomenal, phenomenal hope. Okay? So I'm going to start in my talk. And my talk will be you know, uh, answering that same question that I asked that patient. What exactly is macular degeneration? Now, I actually worked on these talks very, very hard because I couldn't just lift my talks from what I, like when I talked in Japan or when I talked in, in Europe uh, uh, recently. Uh, so I, I, have to, I have to make it so that you can understand it. That's important because if I talk to you and, and tell you, well, you know, uh, the molecular basis of this is this, 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 and this, and this, and I can talk like that all you want, and I'm not, talking down at you. I'm just trying to explain things to you in a, a fashion that I think anybody can understand. Okay? So uh, if anybody's insulted by the way I, I present the information, uh, uh, you know, please take that up with me in the future, but I, 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 I'm not doing it because I think you're not smart enough to understand these things, but it's just so that you can understand really the basic understanding of what, what you have and what, what we can do for you. Okay, well, let's see if I can, I can uh, now move on to my talk. Now the basic question that we have here <clears throat> is what exactly is macular degeneration? And what we'll do is actually um, uh, go over anatomy. Most, of, um, most people, uh, I, I taught anatomy at UPenn uh, to, to the, the medical students uh, of, of eyes, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, the, the, the way I explain it is the eye is like a camera and you have a, a lens uh, which focuses the light uh, to the uh, very center of the vision which is called the macula. Now the inside lining of this basketball is really called the retina. Now the retina lines the whole area here uh, which is, uh, I'm not sure I don't have a laser, how does the laser pointer get? Do you know how the laser pointer works here? Red light. Red light. Good. Ah, forget it, I don't need it. Um, <clears throat> So what we have here is we have a retina, which is, is lining the inside of the basketball. So if you look at it, it's like a cup. And the retina lines all of it. Now, the retina can have a lot of problems. If you don't have a retina, you can't see. Easy as that, right? Now, 
the very important part of the retina, which is only maybe 10% of the overall surface of the retina, is called the macula. And the macula is very, very important. It's only a small portion of the retina, but if you have a loss of that, uh, it causes problems. Why is that? Because the macula is mapped to the brain in, in a disproportionate way. Uh, most of the information that we see that's important to us, reading, driving, all these things, is really our central vision. And the brain acknowledges that. And how it does that is that it's mapped to a good portion of the brain. So, so maybe it's only 10% here, but it can take up 60% of your processing power in your brain. So you know that, that it's important. It's very important. Now what's even more important is something called a phobia, which is part of the macula. Okay? So the phobia is the very pinpoint center, and it's responsible for your 20-20 vision. If that phobia is not there, you're not going to have 20-20 vision. That's just, it's, 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 it's how it is. And so that's why the disease of macular degeneration is so important because it damages the very central part of your vision and the one that's most important. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of an anatomy lesson. Uh, you know, this is a microscopic cross section. And uh, back 20 years ago when I had my own laboratory, uh, I, I, would, I, would, I would section this and I would study it uh, very, very closely. But I'm gonna translate these cell layers uh, to you. In, in my way. Um, you have, uh, really, it's a very thin film, but that thin film is, uh, there's the front part over this way, is called the photoreceptors. And that's really the factory of the eye. If you think of the photoreceptors as a factory and the output is vision, that's what the photoreceptors do. But as a factory, you know, it's a very metabolic uh, uh, situation. And what you have, actually, is uh, something called the RPE cell layer. Now, I call those the garbage men of the eye. What they do is they feed, the, 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 feed the, the factory, and they also take away all the waste. So those cells are very darn important, and I'll, I'll refer to them as garbage men, okay? Or, I'm sorry, political correct would be uh, waste engineers. Waste engineers, okay? <laughs> now, the blood vessels in the back are the supply chain, right? They're also, uh, it's, it's like the trucking lines that feeds uh, uh, the, the photoreceptors of the factory, and it also takes away the waste. And uh, the very center of your vision, the fovea I was talking about, is the most uh, metabolically active site in the human body. Furthermore, it has the highest level of blood flow. That means that you know, there's a lot of trucks going in and out of there. It's like the, maybe the central, uh, uh, central Walmart store you know, where they have the distribution. That's exactly what that area looks like, okay? Now, Again, uh, I mean, I wouldn't talk like this to uh, physicians and, and doctors, but uh, that's how I understand it, and that's very scientifically correct. It's very scientifically correct. Now, what is this macular degeneration? When people give you the diagnosis of macular degeneration, they say, oh, you might have two types, there's two types of macular degeneration. I don't consider them two types. It's a spectrum of disease. One is mild, and then eventually it develops into the severe, okay? So, when, when you get a diagnosis in the office that you have macular degeneration, all that means to me is that uh, you might have signs of something, okay? Uh, but what I need to know is uh, how bad is it? Are you early, are you middle, or are you late, okay? And uh, so, I bet in this room, I mean, the, 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 we span the whole spectrum, my guess, of macular degeneration. Some people here, how many people in this room had the diagnosis of macular degeneration, okay? Um, and do you, uh, could, if I asked you one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not going to ask you, uh, you know, to, to share that, would you know how severe you are? You would? Okay, well, some of these are my patients. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, this could be redundant. I just recognize people <laughs> and uh, you know, raise your hand. Um, um, so let, let's go over the, 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 the different levels of a dry macular degeneration, or, or macular degeneration. The early form is really dry. And what does that mean? Well, it means that you have these particles called drusen inside the back of the eye, or you have something called pigmentary changes. Now, um, the amount that you have, it determines how severe your dry is. So when we classify this, we have several classification systems, but I'll just use a simple one, you know, a mild, moderate, severe. If you have a very small amount, maybe one or two of these spots in your eye, you have macular degeneration, but it's very mild. Okay? If you have more than 12 of these little spots, then you're intermediate or, or moderate. And if you have more than 12,